Hello, and welcome to the BYU Family History Library webinar series. We're glad you could join us today. I'm Olivia Tuller, and I'll be your host for this webinar. If you have technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box and I can address your concerns. You are welcome to use the chat box during the webinar for comments, insights, and questions. However, all questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Our next webinar is on August 11th with Jeremy Minty. He will be giving a presentation entitled Personal Digital Archiving. If you would like to access a previous webinar, please visit our webinar index on our website or search on our YouTube channel. All of our webinars are recorded and uploaded by the following Monday for your convenience. We also post links to recordings and other updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. For today's webinar, we are pleased to hear from James Tanner, who will be giving a presentation on using your smartphone for genealogy, an update. Before we begin, here is a little bit about James. James has over 40 years experience in genealogical research and is an avid blogger of Genealogy Star Blog. He has served as, as a family history volunteer for 18 years and has presented at expos and conferences around the US, Canada, and Europe. He is a member of the board of directors of the Family History Guide Association and is, a, and is currently serving at the BYU Family History Library. James is a professional photographer and has seven children, 34 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. If James is ready, we will turn the time over to him. Okay, thanks. I will share my screen. Our topic today is using your smartphone for genealogy, and it's kind of an update. Um, this is something that uh, we'll have to talk about probably every couple of year or so, or even probably more frequently. Uh, the market uh, and the uh, number of, of entries in the market for genealogical apps for smartphones uh, is growing uh, fairly substantially. Uh, and there's plenty of, of extra new things going on all the time. So we'll get right into it. Uh, just so you understand that many of the major and some of the minor genealogy programs have mobile apps. There's, there's just dozens of Mosul apps for uh, specifically for genealogy. So we're going to be talking about all of those apps. And, and what I'm trying to use here, obviously, are screenshots from, um, from a smartphone, in my case, an iPhone. So I'm using my iPhone to show uh, the various apps and, and screens here on this presentation. Um, the place where you go to get apps are depending on your operating system. If you're a, a, a Windows operating system or Android, then you will be going to the Google Play Store. Or if you're an Apple, uh, have you have Apple's computers, an Apple iPhone or uh, Apple computers, you'll be going to the Apple App Store. Uh, many of these are free. There's, there's no charge for them. Uh, but as we'll see, as I talk a little bit here, there's sometimes they're connected or uh, dependent on or involved with an online website that has a charge. So there may not, free may not help you a whole lot if you don't have the subscription to the online website. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Um, some of the apps only work if you have a subscription to the online website. For example, if you do not have an, an, uh, a subscription to Ancestry, there's very, very little that your uh, Ancestry app on your phone will do for you. So you'll be stuck with, uh, it basically, uh, they are add-ons to uh, the online websites. And uh, without that website, uh, it's just uh, uh, not, not worth having. But in, the, in this case, if you do have an Ancestry account, then this app is very convenient because right there in your hand, you always have your, your ancestry family tree. You can actually do research on it and you can do a lot of other things that I'll talk about as we go along here in this presentation. So basically, you first thing I'd suggest is go out there and do an online search for genealogy apps and uh, you'll see immediately a list uh, on a Google search that will show you all sorts of, uh, of different apps that might be applicable to genealogy. I'm only going to talk about a very small number of them comparative to the actual number that are out there. But 
if you look at this list that came up on uh, on a Google search, you'll see that uh, things like Adobe Photoshop, uh, a couple of voice capture uh, app, a, a DNA painter app, uh, Evernote, some of the ones uh, that uh, I'm not even familiar with because of the large number of, of uh, apps out there. And basically some of these uh, would seem to be kind of not directly related to genealogy, but are re more related to uh, the parts of, that we do in genealogy, which are research or um, documents and, and things like that. And then recording uh, the documents, recording oral histories, uh, getting involved in uh, digitization and some other other activities that are very, very pertinent to genealogical research. So there are also a lot of YouTube videos out there uh, which show you how to use many of the apps. So as you go through uh, to youtube.com and do a search for genealogy apps, and you can put in a, a name if you want to. In this case, the search that I did was for family search. And these were videos that came up about the, the family search, family tree, mobile app. And so we've got uh, a, a number here. I didn't I cut off the number of total of numbers, but there were quite a few apps out there. And so there's lots of information that's been that's already available. And if you watch, You'll see on these, there's some of them are two, three, and four years ago. So my discovering the Family Search Family Tree app was uh, was uh, broadcast three years ago, and it's still on. Of course, it's still on YouTube, and two years ago for the Memories app. So this is the reason we're doing another one because we're updating, and there's a lot more to talk about, uh, even than, than there was a couple of years ago. Now I would note that if you are persistent, and I really mean persistent and know how to dig into websites, you may be able to find some of the instructions on the genealogy websites. Uh, they're not really good at in uh, putting their instructions and their links to their mobile apps uh, where you can go directly and go click, click, oh, there we are. And we know where to get the mobile app and then this is how we connect and this is what we do with, with the program. Uh, they're sort of different worlds. Uh, the, the desktop computer websites uh, don't fit on apps, obviously. I don't fit on, on phones. So they're modified substantially for the, the uh, venue of being presented on a smartphone. And because of that, uh, there's some differences. And there are some advantages of, of the apps. And there's some... Um, advantages of having the website online on on your desktop it's uh, for me for people uh, of you might call more advanced age uh, working on a, the little tiny keyboard on my phone is not my most popular thing uh, so <coughs> excuse me so I would just as soon uh, that was a, uh, a perceived cough to emphasize my advanced age but anyway, so we're basically looking at uh, family search mobile apps. Uh, if you dig around in the website, you may find this. But generally speaking, I would rely on Google because Google will ultimately find everything that's on family search and almost everything else. Uh, not everything on family search does not find li living people or any of the private information. But if you search on a Google, you'll basically be able to find these various apps more easily. Even if you go to the App Store, you've got to be kind of knowing the way to put the information in, in the Play Google Play or the App Store to get to it. Genealogy may bring up a lot of responses, but many of those may not be specific. So you may need to look for Ancestry or Family Search or MyHeritage or one of the other websites. Now, some of the genealogy apps are standalone programs and others are extensions. Now, let's kind of explain how this works. An app is a, really a program. And the word app has now become 
kind of flowing over into meaning any kind of, of program that's been developed for a computer. Uh, but primarily this was named after those programs, the little programs that they built to go on the original smartphones. Now what we have are smartphones that can run practically anything. They're more powerful than, than many of the computers. Uh, you don't have to go back too many years in the uh, uh, desktop computer market, be aware that the smartphone that I that I have today is much more powerful, has more memory, has more has more speed, and more capabilities. Plus, it's a camera, plus all sorts of other things that it does, and uh, that value is has made these programs extremely uh, helpful. And there are millions of these programs now, millions of apps out there. And they've spilled over and become extremely valuable for um, for doing for doing genealogical work. So in this case, you have those programs like, and I'll use Family Search as an example. Family Search, which has at least two directly related apps: one for doing the family tree, and one for doing memories. And the Memories app is a way to take pictures and upload them directly to Memories and get them onto your Memories program online. So it's sort of a front end, but it is also a viewer. So you can view your Memories on this, on the Memories app. But the primary function is <clears throat> to take pictures and of even of documents or of, of people and upload them directly to the Memories app, the Memories website application. And so uh, the family tree also has uh, that ability. It'll show you your complete family tree with all the information. You have to learn how to get the little buttons and, and look through the, men, the menus to find what's there available. But technically, you can look at all of the documents and do research off of your phone. And recently, over the past almost going on a year now, that I've been working on uh, from the Family History Library up in Salt Lake City on doing consultations, 20-minute uh, consultations for people around the world. In my case, primarily people from uh, Latin America, and who speak Spanish. So because I speak Spanish, then I am able to do uh, genealogical support for those people in, in those countries like Argentina and Uruguay, Paraguay, Venezuela, Chile, Peru, all these different countries. And interestingly enough, many of them, many of them do their entire research for genealogy on their phone. So the phone has become a, a it's gone beyond uh, simply something that we use like an appliance. For a lot of people, the phone is their primary contact with the internet and their primary way of doing research. And it's uh, it has some limitations, but they're able to overcome those limitations and do considerably amount of work on their family lines, even when they're confined to the to using a phone. So the next thing is. Uh, Understanding that some of these apps mirror the online genealogy websites, but have additional features. Now, that's exactly what happens with Family Search, Ancestry, uh, MyHeritage, and some of the other uh, large websites that have their their apps. And that is that they uh, they are kind of a surrogate. You can see there the information that you have online. If if it's from my perspective, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, because my my ability to type on those machines is not as good as the people that can use their thumbs and go. But uh, because of that, then I always prefer to work everything on my computer, on my desktop computer, because I have two monitors and I have great big monitors and and everything is all here and I have this, this vast amount of uh, resources. But uh, I can see the advantages of doing many of the things that that you would you could do on the apps on your phones. So basically, you can perform some research. Now, the, the, the limitation here is that the screen size, because 
when you're working on a smartphone, you have a limited screen size. Even if you can zoom in and look at it, it still becomes cumbersome to, uh, to scroll or move across the screen. So there's still, uh, the, the smartphone is never going to replace a, a large screen monitor for doing research. So it's just, it's just not gonna happen. But in this, in this case, for people who don't have access, it's 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 a great boon to them because they can uh, they do have the access through the phone even if it is difficult they still have the access and so this is uh, for those people who have both have the uh, the desktop and the, the the phone then the question is well you know what am I going to do with the phone will it really do anything for genealogy and that's what I'm kind of talking about here today that's part of of uh, what I'll be talking about as we go along. So let me go to kind of uh, through some of the, the major ones and give a, a little bit of commentary on their app. Now, Ancestry.com, for example, is, um, is one of the large genealogy programs and they have two apps. One is their tree app and one is their DNA app. Uh, the DNA app is more uh, just simply informational. It's not necessarily what you would call a primary place to do research in DNA, although you can look at all your information and, uh, and see what it is. Now, on, on the tree app, there's an advantage here because you can see from this screenshot of the tree app that um, there's a lot of these little green, arrow, uh, green leaf re uh, record uh, hints that they've provided. And I have thousands of these, just thousands and thousands. And one of the things that you can do is do these little record hints and attach them to the people while you have odd hours of sitting around with your phone. If you can pry yourself away from uh, videos and, and games and things like that, you can actually do some productive genealogical work in attaching all of these record hints to your people. Uh, I'm so far behind now, I don't think I'll live long enough to get all these record hints attached. And and it looks like, well, you're not detaching very many because there's lots of them on everybody. And the answer is, I already have 20, 30, 40, 50 or more sources on all of these people. And I have higher priorities in um, in doing my particular work. So that kind of explains why I have a bunch of green icons, but you may, you may be able to do some actual productive work by adding these, these icons to your Ancestry account. And this is done easily because you just click uh, tap, 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 and you can add these uh, record hints after reviewing and being careful to not add them to the wrong people. In addition to that, we've got Family Search. Now, Family Search has essentially the same issue. And you'll see that there are blue icons there. That means that there are record matches for those people. So you have the same options here. And with the memory section of uh, Family Search, it goes beyond just being a passive uh, re repository for all of the photos that people have put up. It is basically a way of generating those photos. And I'll talk more about that as I talk about using the, the, the smartphone camera. But understanding, and I'll repeat, that when you take a photo, a picture of a photo like these photos here, you can upload those directly to the memories through from your camera. And so if you went, for example, let me give you an example of what might happen. You go to uh, visit one of your relatives and they have a scrapbook and you say, oh, can I can I get a copy of this? And they say, well, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'll take it and I'll get a copy. No, no, I don't want to let it go. It's only one I have and I'm not letting anybody have it. Well, would you mind if I took some pictures of it? Oh, no, no, no problem at all. Okay, so you go and take pictures of everything in the scrapbook, uh, which I have done many times, by the way, with different relatives and or whatever else they happen to have. And uh, then you have captured that information and then it can be uploaded and become part of the family search family tree directly. Well, you can also upload the same photos to uh, if, you, if you upload them through 
ancestry they can go on to ancestry they can go on to my heritage they can go on the other websites but the the family search app acts as a collection device and direct contact so this is the kind of things that are there now my heritage very large um, company out of uh, headquartered in israel and very heavily saturated in is in europe is uh, has the apps in in uh, all the different languages so they're not only having their apps in english uh, they're in up to uh, their 42 different languages so they can have apps all over the world and this allows people who are uh, participating on on my heritage to communicate directly through the program with their relatives and uh, around the world and so uh, more than just an app on my heritage it becomes the communication or a communication device for communicating out there on the internet with with relatives and obviously not your ancestors too far back but your uh, your relatives who are descendants of all your ancestors your cousins and and other other people in addition there is a, a way to uh, to look at all the discoveries and to work with the program here on uh, on the smartphone the, the larger companies and even some of the smaller companies cannot ignore the fact that some people uh, use this as their primary uh, focus as their primary venue for for uh, working on the internet now find my past is the british company uh, very large millions of of uh, of records and uh, very large collections and once again they have the same things they have uh, filter hints and you can basically see how those records they have a hundred percent mark match to the person and they can tell you that this is the person that that uh, this goes to so um these are the kinds of things that are, are helpful it's always nice to have my phone around and then if i need to look up something or i have a question and i i can show and answer a question right there with my phone uh, if people ask me about the library the byu family history library or if they ask me about the salt lake library or if they ask me a, a question that i can answer quickly uh, generally speaking i just can pull out my phone and start answering the question immediately sometimes i'm ending up there holding the phone up so they can see uh, what i've what i've found so it's uh it, it's become a way to uh, carry around the vast internet of the world's information uh, in my pocket so it's it's been uh, a, a way for me to get to actually expand and do research and and contact and do all of these uh, presentations and classes and things as a uh, as an adjunct um, i actually produce some of the some of the things i've been doing for for instance i've been doing a series of uh, instructional videos for the byu family history library on their scanners and other digitizing equipment that's in the library there's quite a large number and it's a very very valuable uh, place to go to to do digitization and, and get all that free uh, and to use uh, that equipment that that costs some of the many many thousands of dollars and the whole production has been done through my the videos portions that i have and the uh, all of the images that i have captured have been through my phone because of the of the um uh, convenience of simply using that and not having to haul in a bunch of equipment my one thing that i found was absolutely necessary was to have a tripod for my phone so i now have a, uh, a very nice tripod that will keep the phone so i don't end up shaking at it ruining all the photos that i take jenny net is the french company uh and they have their uh app and their records on here and the categories and uh, their family tree you might want to know that jenny net is owned by um, uh, my heritage and so it's part of my heritage and they have some of the advantages there and, and uh, my heritage has gotten 
one and a half billion, something like that, uh, French records onto its website in the last few months. So there's, there's just a lot of things here. And when you have those particular records now, if you are, if you have a, uh, a more uh, desk based instead of internet based uh, interest in genealogical programs, you'll find that they have apps also. So Roots Magic has a very developed app for its its programs. And you can see all your information from Roots Magic on your phone and, and uh, work with it. And then the French program, Edidis or Heredis, has its um, has a also has a, a program for the for the your um, for the smartphones. Now we're going to get into some programs that are not directly related to these big online programs, but are programs that in themselves are are standalone apps, meaning they're not necessarily connected, although they are owned by the, the big companies or partners with the big companies, then um, these are the programs that are basically ones that will be valuable to anyone that's doing uh, genealogy. Now, if you don't know about Find a Grave, then you really need to know because this is one of the most essential programs that we have in uh, in genealogy it's it's i can't it's probably one of the one that's most uh, used as a source other than uh, the census records and things like that find a grave uh, started many years ago and has built into a uh, a tremendously large collection of cemeteries around the world and uh, with pictures of the grave markers and memorials and biographies and and all sorts of information about individuals and it seems like there's i don't think any research is complete even begun until you've used find a grave to go find whether or not your your ancestor relative or whatever is in the cemetery and i chose to look at the uh, Provo City Cemetery and you'll see down here that there are 31,875 memorials and it's 90% photographed and 58% has a GPS. So this is, uh, and GPS is something that's just been added quite recently to find a grave uh, because of their competition and their competition in a sense is billion graves. Now find a grave is owned by ancestry and billion graves is not owned by ancestry. <laughs> Billion Graves is not owned by fam by MyHeritage, but they are a MyHeritage partner, and so they are uh, they have the the backing since to some extent and the support from uh, MyHeritage, and their uh, their their way into the market when they started was to uh, to develop a program that showed on a map like the maps from Google and Apple Maps exactly where the grave markers were. So when you take a picture of a grave marker with billion graves, the, the GPS coordinates are recorded at the time you take the photo, and then they're part of it. And in essence, you can use a billion graves in the cemetery. Now I've got one of my uncles who died uh, here in the Mesa City Cemetery. And if you didn't know where his uh, grave marker was, you could pull up billion graves and go into a map and then you would have the little blue dot that you follow and you could walk around until you saw where your blue dot was over the marker here and you could look down and you'd see the grave so it will move you it'll give you the the actual real time location of where you are in relation to a grave in a cemetery now if you've ever been to a big cemetery i mean a big big cemetery you know that this could be just almost in uh, almost in, unbelievable that you could find and the and it's simple too because you can also find all of the related graves around you with the app now this is one app that uh, has a free part and then has a pay for part so it's called a freemium part you go you pay you get the free version but you have to pay to get the premium version 
in this case, uh, if you're involved in in, uh, in cemeteries, then you know that uh, that this can be worth whatever money you want it costs, which is not very expensive. Now, the other part of this is that, unfortunately, from people like me, who would be glad to go out and take cemetery photos, uh, as far as I can tell from talking to Billion Graves and to, uh, and I don't have specific information from find, find, find a Grave, but it appears that almost every grave that anybody has ever heard about in Utah has been put into these apps. So uh, some places in the world are fully done. And by the way, uh, my heritage used billion graves to do exactly that with the graves in Israel. And all, and uh, some couple of years ago, a few years ago, actually before the pandemic, uh, my heritage had photographed and transcribed every known grave in Israel. And they're all part of this billion graves website. So uh, app and website. Now, one thing you to understand is, yeah, there's YouTube on your phone, and uh, you know, some of us watch uh, news or you or whatever on uh, from YouTube on their on their phones, and uh, from that standpoint, you know, all of the videos that are in these uh, large video collections uh, right now, like BYU Family History Library has. 711 videos and in you know, lots of different topics and this this recording here this video will will be added to the the BYU family history library youtube channel uh goldie may which is a family search uh app a family search not family search sponsored but it works with the family search family tree and also with the ancestry program as a research assistant, and it uh, it provides some very substantial amount of of, uh, of research. And although this, they're basically starting out, uh, they still have already twenty nine videos and and uh, quite a few subscribers. So these are the kinds of things that you can see uh, when you go to the apps on your phone. And. So this is more highlight on the BYU Family History Library uh, YouTube channel, just to give you an idea. Uh, when you, right now, the average that we, do, the, the, that we do at the library, the combined of all of the people um, submitting videos is about three to four or more a week. So they're coming up just constantly. And you'll see here that there was one day ago, two days ago, six days ago, six days ago, eight days ago, 13 days ago. And uh, if you go in almost any time you look under the videos tab, you'll find uh, that there are more videos that have been added. Also, it's important to know that, and all this comes with your smartphone. In other words, you can you can view all this, you can interact with all this. Everything is right there. You don't have to go to your desktop computer. You don't have to go anywhere. You just have to pull out your phone, uh, if it's a smartphone and online, and uh, go to YouTube to see the latest offerings from MyHeritage, from Ancestry, Basically, uh, if you're using your smartphone for uh, social networking, like with with find um, with Facebook or with any of the other programs, you'll you'll find very quickly uh, Instagram or whatever that that all these big companies are also in all those social networking. So my heritage has a very active uh, website or site on Facebook as does Ancestry, as does Family Search. So basically, uh, using your phone gives you this access, even if you're not sitting at a computer and uh, with a large screen. Now, here's some other programs that have been sort of thought up and used for um, uh, to give you some uh, additional information about your family. Uh, Relative Finder is probably the most uh, most popular of these. It's from the BYU Family History Technology Lab, 
And uh, it's a standalone program that you can add, but you sign in with familysearch.org. So you have to have a free familysearch.org account. And then it will look at whatever your family tree is, whatever portion of it that you have, and it will find all sorts of things about your relatives and find them out there. And in different categories, for example, if you want to know all the people who were signers, if you have any ancestors who were signers of the Declaration of Independence or who were Mayflower passengers or were anything other, there's just dozens of categories here of people and they will show you who they are and, and uh, how you're related to them. So those are the kinds of things that are interesting. Also, if you're related, it'll show you if you're related to presidents of the of the United States and to uh, Nobel Prize winner, anything, any type of thing that out there in history around, they've they've started to add in to this program. Now, Family Search has basically um, been thought about this, and and they've added in some add in added value attractions to uh, to their to the familysearch.org family tree app. And this is the more section. If you got down at the bottom of your uh, of your smartphone screen, you'll see a little three bar thing that's called a hamburger icon, um, kind of reminiscence of a hamburger. But uh, that's what it's called, that little three bar thing down there. And so if you use the hamburger icon, you can see that there's going to be find a person. Okay, you can search for people. Uh, relatives around me. This is this is a kind of a social one. If you're in a group of people that have smartphones and all have the Family Search Family Tree app, they've got to have the app. Then you can basically turn on a broadcast that goes out to the other people with the app. If they all open up the Family Tree app and hit relatives around me, then you'll get little radar kind of things that'll then show you all the people in that area that are related to you. And if, if you want something, we haven't had any in-person conferences for a long time, for now going on three years, but uh, it's gonna be interesting to go back to the conferences before the conference, before the pandemic uh, at the conference. The last conference I went to was the BYU uh, Family History Conference here on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah. And I opened up the, uh, relatives around me app and everybody else had the app on their phone and I had uh, over 300 relatives at that conference so it's yeah, just really strange but anyway that there's map your ancestors uh, there's a little uh, a, you can work with uh, helping and uh, to, to correct some of the information in the family tree by improving place names that standardizing place names you had contacts family groups contributions, all sorts of things here, and then some activities that you can participate in. So there's lots of things that come on. Now, this is something that is, is for me, is extremely important. And this, this is what has basically changed one way that I do research in a, in a fundamental fashion. Uh, the, the experience in here that I'm referring to when I say moving into the library with luggage is going to the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, which is right downtown in the middle of the downtown, uh, right across the street from uh, the from Temple Square in Salt Lake City. And in the morning, the people are all queued up outside waiting to get into the library when it opens. And inevitably, a fairly high percentage of them are pulling uh, cards of luggage of of boxes or actually suitcases or big briefcases heavy big piles of stuff into the library with them and so i've always gone there and got scratched my head and said well i don't understand this the last you know 10 or 15 years because what i do is i call it i haul my computer in I have all my information, all the digital records that I have, all the all the sources, everything connected, and I and the library has internet connection. So I just sit down, open up my my um, laptop, and I'm online. Well, 
if you've watched the library, if it's Salt Lake uh, Family History Library over the last few years, you'll know that the more and more and more computers in there, that it's become very computer oriented. Do you still see the people lugging in all their, all their equipment? The answer to that is put it online, digitize it, get it up into family search. And if you have records or books or whatever it is you need, just digitize them, turn them into PDF files and make them available. You don't have to carry all that stuff. And then the big boon, the big boon from it is use your camera on your smartphone to copy research in the library. Now, you have to make sure the library allows cameras and images. In the case of the Family History Library in Salt Lake, there doesn't seem to be a problem, but there may be some restrictions. We'll always be careful if there are restrictions in the library, but think of the time. I used to have to go in there and copy out all this information. I still see people sitting at their table in the Family History Library copying information out of the books or off of the microfilm or off, well, now not off the microfilm, but basically copying out of information. Uh, I, my answer is don't waste your time. Just take pictures of everything that you think you're going to use and then you can uh, you, you have it at your leisure. You can use it while it's in the library, obviously, uh, but if you're, uh, if you're doing it and if you carry your computer, you can uh, take the pictures with your smartphone and uh, use a connection to your computer and on Apple computers, you can use what's called AirDrop. You can AirDrop your, your photos directly to your computer. So within a few seconds, you can have all of the book and everything, and then you have it on your computer so that you can type and copy and not have to spend uh, an inordinate amount of time handwriting things out. So instead of uh, pulling a briefcase full of documents and, and, rep and my work into the library, I carry uh, my laptop computer, which is uh, very light, and my phone. That's it, folks. So that's how it's kind of basically uh, transformed the way that I do and, and then a lot of people do their research. Now, inevitably, if you're a genealogist, you're, you're going to go to a cemetery. And uh, if, you, if you don't, then you're losing the what I call the, the the real work or the real outdoor part of the of the genealogical experience. But when you do that, you should make sure that you when you you should take that you take your camera and be on billion graves. See if there are any graves that have yet to be be uh, digitized, yet to be taken and have uploaded. Um, in the case of the Mesa City Cemetery, my daughter and her husband uh, went through systematically and, and digitized the entire cemetery. So these are, uh, there's uh, places where that's true, but from time to time, you may find uh, places in the world where there where none of these programs either find my path, find a grave or um, billion graves has yet made any in inroads. And the advantage there is you've now preserved that information for the for posterity. You can also go on the program and transcribe the, the grave markers and kind of earn credits if you do that with the program. So that's billion graves. You can also use your phone and I wouldn't, uh, it's, it's easier if you use a digital recorder and that they have these little tiny digital recorders, but and with a microphone, uh, but it's uh, possible to do that if you need to, to, to record an oral history. If somebody starts telling a story, you can say, just a minute, I'm going to record this. Do you mind? And they'd say, no, 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 I'll tell you. And so they tell the story and then you have that. You've captured that story and you can upload that uh, story directly to uh, uh, memories on Family Search app. As of at present, they do not take videos, so you don't be you're not able to do that to the videos. We're moving right along here. Um, one thing that's just always a problem is you can't necessarily read everything that you're doing research in. And now 
the technology for Google Translate is phenomenal. And let me just kind of outline that real briefly. They have text translation, okay, with 108 languages. Now, with Google and uh, with using Translate, you use your camera on your phone. For instance, if you find a passage in a language, let's say it's in German or Finnish or something, and you take a picture of it on your phone, then Google will translate it right there. It'll turn it into a text file. And then you can copy and paste the text file or save the text file off and have a, trans a translation, instant translations of the text in 108 languages. And it then takes, if you want to, if you're just looking at it and you want to translate it, just you just tap on the text, you copy it and tap the Google Translate icon, which is a little icon in the down, in the corner of the, the screen of your camera screen, and it will just translate it. Uh, if you're walking around in a, a foreign country and you've got signs and you don't understand the sign, all you have to do is point your camera, click the button, and it'll translate the signs. Um, so offline, uh, it will translate up to 59 languages with no internet connection. So there's a way to do that. And instant camera translation, translate text and images just by pointing your camera. So that's what I'm talking about, walking around and getting instant camera translation. And then you can take or import photos and get higher quality translations in 90 languages. So if you take a photo of it and then let them work on it, then you'll get a better translation coverage. And it will also do bilingual translation of conversations on the fly in 70 different languages. So you need to talk to somebody. So you say, well, where can I go to find this, this office building? And then it will translate it. And then the person will be able to say something back onto the phone. And then it'll translate it into whatever language you speak, English or Spanish or whatever. OK, so you may want to look at that. That's something you may really want to know about for doing genealogy, but just generally for uh, doing research or for travel purposes. Also, it's obviously what we do with our smartphones is take a lot of pictures and we document special events. And I think sometimes our, our, the number of pictures we take far exceeds our ability to, um, to, preserve, to uh, process them. We can also preserve family heirlooms and artifacts. So if you have something that's uh, peculiarly part of your family tradition, then you have uh, a way of, of preserving that. I've done that with by uploading uh, photos of, of uh, crochet and other things that, that have been done by some of my ancestors. This is probably the greatest uh, most effective thing that we have uh, participated in with the phones and the texting and um, with the organizing and spreadsheets and other tools that we have. So in, in our family, um, when my five daughters uh, get together to start planning something, they immediately set up, uh, start at, sending texts back and forth to each other. And then they uh, inevitably put a some kind of a document or spreadsheet online. Uh, for an example, in a recent family wedding that we had in our family, uh, the preparations were extensive and the travel was extensive. We had people coming in from out of state at different times and leaving at different times. And they had to arrange for places for them to stay. And we had to arrange all the food. And well, I'm saying we, uh, it was all my daughters. Uh, uh, I'm sort of the uh, sort of the go carry and go get sort of uh, part of that whole equation. But as they do that, they set up everything online and keep it all going on their smartphones. And if they need to, they send pictures to each other back and forth. And they do this for family reunion type activities, which is what the wedding turned into be. And, um, and 
anything else that they're doing, dinners, um, uh, managing, getting children back and forth to the university, uh, things like that. All of those things are happening through their smartphones. Now, the rule and the understanding here is that smartphones are sort of fragile. They're not, they're really kind of rugged, but they can break. And I have, well, we've been through a few broken smartphones, but they're more easily lost. That's the problem. And uh, uh, one of my uh, <coughs> friends, associates, you want to say, I'll say, yeah, I'm related to him, uh, basically go skiing and has lost at least two smartphones while skiing. So it's it's not something you can lose. Uh, that it is there. You have to be aware of the fact that all you have to do is slip and drop it. It may break and not be fixable. So my admonition is probably not a good idea to store all your genealogy on a smartphone. You should back it up to online storage or other secure storage. At least get it off that phone. It's uh, it's pretty terrible. And it's pretty terrible to see pictures of people in the newspaper who are suffering from various uh, very extensive uh, natural disasters that are occurring that say, oh, I've lost everything. I've lost all my photos of my family, et cetera. The answer is there's no reason for that. There's no reason that they could have been lost, should have been lost. Get them off your phone. If you have photos, put them up onto a, a storage site like Google or Amazon or Microsoft or any of those kinds of sites where you can store photos. And then you should, and that will keep them from being lost and all the rest of your information. Why not store the rest of it up there and back it up? And one thing I just say is that it's it's nice to have one. And I it's too bad that I very frequently, when I have my phone, you know, in my hand and uh uh, or somebody's, I see somebody uh, and they come up and they ask a question or you say, well, it's just look it up on your phone. Well, I don't really know how to use my phone very well. I, I just use it for messages to my family and, and phone calls, you know, well, okay. So why are you carrying around a very, uh, in some cases, expensive item and computer that's a combined camera and recording device and translating device and, and uh, a gene genealogical research device and all of these things uh, without spending some time learning how to use it. Uh, the same people who don't seem to be able to uh, run their phones can, uh, can read menus and create food, which I could never even begin to do. So it's just a matter of, of spending some time and to keep learning and having some interest and understanding that this is a marvelous tool and it has a lot to do with how and, and uh, we do our genealogy now. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Do we have any questions? Anybody have any questions out there? It looks like we have a comment from Daryl in the question and answer portion about find a grave. Oh, okay. Let me have a look. Find a grave does have a very simple to use app. It allows you to take a photo, add GPS and send to. Okay, well, that's, I, I mean, they do, yes. But that's only very recently that that's happened. And like they said, you showed with the, the Provo City Cemetery, the percentage of the, the the GPS have not nearly the percent as bit much as their their own database. So the uh, this is also tag as you take the photo. Yes, that's very important to identify the the people involved and, and get them. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? Thank you. Glad to be here today. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you will join us for our next webinar, which is on Thursday, August 11th with Jeremy Minty. He will be giving a presentation entitled Personal Digital Archiving. A recording of this webinar will be made available next week. You can view that on our YouTube channel or on our website. If you have any comments or questions, you can always email us at fhl underscore webinars at byu.edu or follow Facebook and Twitter. Thank you and have a wonderful week.